Greetings, friends, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, I've been asked three questions about modesty and the outward appearance, and I did not address these areas in my 2019 book, Restoring Christian Modesty. The three questions are, should women wear pajama pants to bed? Number two, should women wear leggings? And number three, should men grow beards? Here are my answers on these three questions as I'm desiring to rightly divide the word of truth through prayer, fasting, searching the Bible, and searching Brother Bram's quotes on these subjects. And as always, I'm open to correction if I'm wrong on these things. Question number one, should women wear pajama pants to bed? Friends, I believe the Bible-based answer is no, women should not wear pajama pants to bed. The main reason why not is because it creates a double standard and allows women to cross-dress, but not the men. Now, of course, you would think, why would a man want to wear a woman's bra or woman's skirt to bed? There would be no reason to. That sounds ridiculous. But that same thought should be applied to the women as well. It should be considered ridiculous or completely unnecessary for women to wear pajama pants, men's garments, to bed at night. Now, of course, there is a quote from Brother Branham on this from 1964, so let's listen to this. I'd like to ask the question, number one, is ladies' pajamas. Now, wait just a minute, let me read it. Pertaining to men's pajamas, it's a wrong to turn the ends out. No, let's be all right. Is the ladies' pajamas pertaining to man's garments? <laughs> oh, don't tell me they can't ask you some burners. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to let you do the side of that. You shouldn't be praying around before people with them on. I know that. So that way it would be, but in the uh, going to bed, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to back up on that one, too. I told you to be honest. If I didn't know, I'm not going to put my own thought about it. All right. Unless you want my own thought. If you want that, I'll tell you. See? Now, remember, it isn't. It, this, this could be a million miles wrong. I think it'd look nice to have a nightgown on. <laughs> but, but if you, but, if you uh, but uh, it's just up to you now. I can't, I can't tell you that because I couldn't back it up. Now, that's, that's, that's me, not him, remember. See? Notice, friends, after listening to the quote that a lot of people that allow women to wear pants are turning down Brother Branham's suggestion, which his suggestion was for women to wear nightgowns or skirts or dresses to bed. And notice also Brother Branham specifically said it would be wrong for a woman to parade around in men's garments. Well, the same would be true for men. It would always be wrong for men to parade around in women's garments. So friends, my question is, have the people that allow women to wear pants to bed, have they prayed about it, fasted about it, and sought God's face regarding this? If they did, I believe they would find the same conclusion that I've come to, that if you allow a woman to wear men's garments to bed, then you have to allow the men to wear women's garments to bed as well. And of course, I believe that would be an abomination. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 plainly says it's an abomination to cross-dress. So I believe the wisdom of God would teach us to never cross-dress at any time for any purpose. Question number two, should women wear leggings? My answer to this question is, I think it is acceptable for women to wear leggings as long as their dress or skirt is modest enough. What I mean by that is the dress or skirt should not be too tight, and it should also be past the knee down to the shin, as I taught in my 2019 book, restoring Christian modesty. Remember, the scriptures say that the thighs nakedness, the belly, the breast, and I would believe all the way up to the shoulders is nakedness. So Christian women should cover from the shoulder to the shin, as I wrote in the 2019 book. And I say this with no malice in my heart. Uh, I've been criticized because sisters in our church wear leggings, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is that leggings do not pertain to men. Leggings are not men's garments. Leggings are equivalent to pantyhose or tights. And men in our church and the men that I know that believe this message do not wear tights or pantyhose or leggings. 
So the first reason is very sound to me, and it lines up with Deuteronomy 22.5. Leggings are not men's garments. And also, if you condemn leggings on women, then you have to condemn pantyhose or tights on little children. And I do not see how anyone could condemn a little baby girl wearing tights underneath her dress or skirt in wintertime. Tights, leggings, pantyhose are garments of women or girls, and they help keep our sisters warmer during these very cold months of the wintertime. A second reason leggings are okay is because they don't make the woman immodest. Now, I have heard how some sisters in the message are wearing shorter skirts above the knee and wearing leggings underneath. I believe that's an immodest thing to do. It's presenting the thigh and the knee, which the Bible calls nakedness. Exposing the thigh is nakedness, according to Isaiah 47, verses 1 through 3. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind the meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. And I believe it exposes that those sisters that do that may have a spirit of lust upon them because they're exposing body parts that should never be exposed. And of course, I know they're covered in tights, but you can still see the outline of their thigh as leggings are skin tight and loose clothing is commanded by the word of God. So for these two reasons, I believe it's acceptable for our sisters to wear leggings because they are not men's garments and they help keep her warm in the wintertime as long as she's dressed modestly as well and not exposing her thighs or body parts that are considered nakedness. Question number three, should New Testament men grow beards? This is an honest and sincere question. Uh, my answer is no, I do not believe New Testament men are required to wear beards. I believe beard wearing was an Old Testament custom like other Old Testament customs that New Testament Gentiles do not have to follow. Without a doubt, beard wearing was an important Old Testament custom, as God had Moses put beard wearing into the law, recorded in Leviticus. But even in the law, beard cutting was permitted at times, such as when a man was cleansed from leprosy, or when he was mourning, and other times. Also, the law never said if a man cut his beard, it was an abomination. So beard cutting was not on the same level as cross-dressing. Remember that Deuteronomy 22.5 labels cross-dressing as an abomination, which is why some Christians today abstain from cross-dressing. I'll leave a link to my video about abominations in the description below. Christian men today, then, have the liberty to wear beards, but I do not believe the New Testament requires all Christian men to wear beards. There are 19 mentions of beards in the scripture. They're all in the Old Testament. I could not find any New Testament mentions. The first three deal with cleansing from leprosy. One mentions a lion's beard. Another is David's beard. Two important scriptures are Leviticus 19.27 and Leviticus 21.5. And they say priests and Israeli men are not to round their corners of their beards like the heathen. Three mentions David's men were disgraced by their beards being cut off. Uh, Mephibosheth had an untrimmed beard, likely not grooming himself because of grief. Joab grabbed Amasa's beard in a false show of friendship and then murdered him. Ezekiel plucked his beard after hearing Israelis mingle their seed with the heathens. Oil on Aaron's beard was a sign of unity among the brethren. Three more examples again show the disgrace of a shaved beard. And then God tells Ezekiel to shave his beard as a sign to Israel. The reason I believe beard wearing was just an Old Testament custom was because an Old Testament believer, Joseph, a man who typed Christ, was exalted to second command in Egypt. And he had to shave his face in order to be a ruler in Egypt. This is found in Genesis 41 verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. 
This proves a holy man, a believer, who lived so close to God that he even was a type of Jesus Christ, was uncondemned by God with a shaved face. We also find with Joseph that he was given a ring for his hand and a gold chain about his neck. And in my 2019 book about modesty, I use this as an example, again, of how rings are acceptable because Joseph was allowed to wear a ring as long as the purpose behind the ring is a godly purpose, such as for work in Joseph's case or for believers as a sign of the eternal marriage vow between a man and a woman. If you condemn wearing rings, wearing necklaces, or shaving the face, then you've got to condemn Joseph as well. But of course we know he's not condemned by God. He's a forgiven child of God, a man who lived extremely close to God, so much so that he was a type of Jesus Christ. In closing, I hope this video has been a blessing on these three questions. Again, I think they're excellent questions, and I've done my best by the grace of God to rightly divide the word of truth using scripture and the quotes from our prophet, Brother William Branham. I encourage everyone to fast and pray about these questions. Consider the ramifications or effects of your choices. I believe if you seek God with prayer and fasting on these subjects, as I have, I believe you'll come to very similar conclusions by the grace of God. If you have any questions, concerns, or testimonies about this video, please contact me. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.